My name is Professor Antlantam Kize. I'm the Deputy Vice Chancellor and the Head of the College of Humanities at the University of KwaZulu Natal. It's a, a very, very complex subject, but as you will be aware, we inherited a psychology that was informed by Eurocentric assumptions. So African Standard Psychology takes its point of departure uh, from the African continent. It is as, uh, informed by assumptions, values, presuppositions, and epistemologies of the African continent. In other words, we center our work on the continent as our point of departure. And it is from there that we seek to establish global relevance. But we must start from who we are, our own experiences. There are many applications. Uh, obviously, you have got applications in, in healing. I'm not going to use the word psychotherapy because it has got its own connotations. Uh, so African-centered psychology has got applications in healing. Uh, you may be aware, for example, that we have uh, used African-centered methods in healing survivors of violent conflict or trauma uh, in the province of KwaZulu-Natal. In 2008, we were already doing that, okay? Uh, but at a more personal uh, level, when we are not talking now about uh, large communities, we are also using African-centered psychology in understanding families, by way of a uh, marriage and family counseling, looking at it from an African-centered perspective. When couples come, they've got issues in their relationships, uh, in their marriages, then we start asking, if we were to look at these issues from an African-centered perspective, what are they going to look like? Then now uh, we are taking a different trajectory altogether, <laughs> okay? <laughs> Uh, because the whole issue of uh, time-bound counseling becomes problematic. You are here to engage in a marriage or family counseling. Are you going to keep them there for, for 50 minutes? So African-centered psychology would say it is the relationship and the person that matters and issues of the heart, issues of a uh, relationships and families cannot be dictated to in terms of time. So we differ then in terms of uh, conceptions of time uh, with the Eurocentric tradition. We say for us it is the human being that matters and we do not attach a value to the issues that human beings bring to the counseling session, let alone time-bound limits. How do we then infuse gender <laughs> into this whole scenario? Uh, maybe you are aware of the work of African scholars in the field of African feminism and African womanism. Uh, because the feminism that you would probably have been taught in the undergraduate curriculum reflects the experiences of women in Europe, right? And in many cases, uh, those would be the experiences of white women whose backgrounds and challenges are fundamentally different from the experiences of the African or Africana woman. So that is my point of departure. When we are talking about the gender, when we are talking about womanhood, we need to go back to the source and understand from an indigenous African perspective how were gender relations understood and how did colonialism impact on those gender relations? And how did we end up adopting an agenda that was not our own? In a different context, I can unpack that, but that is the understanding that I bring to the counseling session. People who are doing African-centered psychology need to locate it in its historical context we also need to familiarize ourselves with the complexities of the discipline. It is a very, very complex uh, discipline because in some cases you get a sense that that complexity is lost. Okay, 
So we need to delve very, very deeply into the discipline and understand it in its complexities. Maybe that is where all of us are still uh, falling short or battling, but that is a project. The whole issue of African-centered psychology is a future-directed project. It is not a project that is located in the past, as some of the skeptics would argue. It is a future-directed project in line with the epistemology of African-centered thought.